Well, few understand the intricacies of working with the Chinese more than James Lilly, the U.S. ambassador to China from 1989 to 1991. He also served 25 years in the State Department throughout Asia. More well, recently, Ambassador Lilly has made headlines for his tough stances on everything from trade to China's military buildup. Earlier, I visited with the ambassador at the International Program Center at the University of Oklahoma. Ambassador Lilly, with everything that is going on currently in the Middle East, do you think sometimes U.S. policymakers may be putting Asia on a back burner? I think tactically sometimes this preoccupation with the Middle East gets in the way, but we do spend a lot of time on Asia because I think American policymakers know that Asia is the land of the future. Explain and that to me. You Middle East, well, because of economic development, because of trade, this is the fastest growing area in the world. More of our exports go to Asia than any other area of the world. It's all about finance, economy, money, commerce. Asia's the big actor on the block. China, Japan, uh, Southeast Asia. So we are, we've got our eye fixed on that and we also are aware that the second most important military power in the world is in Asia. It's China. It's not the Soviet Union, Russia anymore. It's China. And they're far behind us, but nevertheless we watch it very closely because it's building up, it's increasing, it's improving, and it's aimed at us. So we have to pay attention to it. Many see China as this huge economic threat. Do you, could it also be an economic opportunity for the U.S.? Oh, I think it definitely, no question about it. Our exports to China have increased exponentially in the last five years. They've gone way, way up. It's the fastest growing export market for United States in the world. They begin to buy our stuff and as they get the middle class rising, they'll buy more. Uh, yeah, they're a challenge, sure they are. They're going after energy resources that challenge us competitively. We've got to be smart, we've got to be tough, we've got to take them on, but this is not a reason for war or anything like this. We both are trying to get oil to fuel our economies. Their demands have increased a great deal and they've gone after places like Iran, Sudan, countries we, we, we don't touch. They share Nigeria with us. They share Venezuela with us. We can work it out. We can work it out. So as a challenge, yes. As a threat, no, I don't think so. What do we need to know as Amer American business people? What do we need to know as American business? How do we work with China? How do we take, for lack of a better term, take advantage of what's going on in China? Well, we've got probably one of the largest chambers of commerce in the world is in Shanghai. Probably two to 3,000 members, increasing at 100 a month. Most of them making profit. Tough market, hard sell, market research, due diligence has to be done. American businessmen can make it. Their Profits are good, but they've got to be tough and smart, and they've got to get into a very competitive market. There's a demand for American goods. They like our consumer items. Walmart is very big in China. They like these outlets that give them everything. They'll buy the products. They, uh, they are a huge telecommunications market. They're producing a lot, but they aren't keeping up with the, uh, with the modernization. So I, there's a lot to be done. I think American business can do a lot in China, and the way our exports are going up is encouraging. Businessmen are going in there and finding the Chinese in the service industries. We've really pushed in there. Insurance, hotels, banks, that is where we are very competitive. And the Chinese have begun to open these markets to us. We all can, also can have our own distribution networks in China. That is helping us. I've heard some people, or actually had people say to me in China that uh, Americans were late to the game. Do you think we're late to the game in China? No, no. We've been there all along. I think this is, this is one-upmanship. <laughs> they, uh, we, were, we were the first ones to go in there on offshore oil. We broke the ground on that. We sold them the first real 
advanced aircraft and Boeing. We built fertilizer camps way back in the 70s in China. We have huge uh, Motorola plants in China. Uh, we're, we're moved in, we're, we're in there. We're the biggest chamber of commerce in China. We've got more Americans living in Shanghai, a huge school, uh, Beijing, moving into other cities, Tianjin. We're big, we're, we're part of the act. We were there right at the beginning. We weren't there in the 50s, but I, the Chinese went through the Cultural Revolution, the Great Leap Forward, they tore themselves to bits. We came in at the end of the Cultural Revolution when they were just opening up and we were right there to help them. When you mentioned some of the strengths that the U.S. has there, yeah. you mentioned oil, aerospace, and then electronics. electronics, but you also mentioned something to do with agriculture and agriculture, the right, fertilizer. Right, right. Those are our three biggies here in, in Oklahoma. So are there opportunities for? Oh yeah, I think Oklahoma is going in there and strong. You have an aerospace industry here, you have agriculture, you have oil equipment. You have the things that they want. And I would encourage Oklahoma to go in there and sell. You just had a delegation over there. And I gather they had some pretty good experiences. And I think uh, they've got, you've got a couple of hundred Chinese students here at OU. My sense is you're on a roll. Ambassador Lilly, thank you very much. Thank you for asking me.